Intelligent Networks By the early 80s, telephone exchanges had become completely digital computerized exchanges, interconnected through a reliable packet-based computer network carrying signaling information. This signaling network was later standardized by the International Telecommunication Union, ITU, in a signaling system number 7, a set of telephony signaling protocols which are used to set up most of the world's public switch telephone network telephone calls. An SS7 network contains three kinds of elements. Signaling points. Network equipment that can send or receive signaling messages. Signaling links. Links that can carry signaling messages. Signaling transfer points. Intermediate nodes that route signaling messages. Telephone companies soon realized that this computer network could be made to do much more than just connect subscribers A and B. Digital exchanges could be programmed to forward, block or transfer calls, reverse the call charges and record voice messages. In fact, they could do anything that the installed hardware and software allowed them to do. This is how the idea of intelligence in the network was born. In the beginning, the management of these services was inefficient, as even the smallest patch required going to each switch in turn and reinstalling the new software. It was soon recognised that it would be much more convenient if services could be designed in a more high-level language and could be deployed and managed from one point rather than separately in each switch. The fact that SS7 provides a secure data network for signalling messages meant it was easy to add special processing nodes in the network for call processing. These nodes are called service control points and run the service logic for advanced telecommunication services. Based on these ideas, the ITU-T published the first Intelligent Network Standards in 1992. IN is a framework for implementing value-added services in telecommunications networks. The IN conceptual model considers several views or planes. On the global functional plane, it describes the software components that a service provider must deploy in order to assemble services. This is actually a software component model. Basic software components are called Service Independent Building Blocks, SIBs, which can be made up into service scripts, thus providing the service logic for value-added telecommunication services. Nowadays, the Internet, the mobile networks, the deregulations processes, and the new standards in software technology are challenging the IN concept, and many industry groups have proposed initiatives such as TINA and OSA to cope with these new requirements, confining the IN scope to telephony. Next Generation Networks The introduction of the IN concept and the idea of having a signalling network based on packet data communications on top of the telephone network is actually one of the first milestones in the convergence of data and telephone networks. Nowadays, telephony, the internet and cellular mobile networks are interconnected but continue to be different domains each of which has its own protocols and services. Actually, the telephone network and the internet are built on completely different requirements, philosophy and technology. In telephony, all control is centralised in the network and the terminal remains a simple device. The internet, on the other hand, has no centralised control and the terminals are the computers it interconnects. Each of these computers can run applications of arbitrary complexity. In spite of the differences between the telephone networks and the internet, the explosive development of mobile networks has served as a catalyst for the convergence of telephony and data networks. This convergence process takes place around an IP core transport network for voice, data and multimedia. The telephony, mobile and data networks of today will not disappear in this setting, but will be seen more as access networks that plug into the IP core network. This architectural evolution is often referred to as Next Generation Network. According to ITUT, a Next Generation Network is a packet-based network able to provide telecommunication services and able to make use of multiple broadband quality of service enabled transport technologies and in which service related functions are independent of underlying transport related technologies. It enables unfettered access for users to networks and to competing service providers and or services of their choice. It supports generalised mobility which will allow consistent and ubiquitous provision of services to users. Middleware 
The network convergence process implies the adoption of an open distributed intelligence model as an evolution of the intelligent network model initially designed for telephony networks. This is the case for the telecom industry initiatives such as OSA and Parley, which are distributed software architectures aimed at providing a platform and a set of APIs which enable the creation of services by organizations both inside and outside the traditional telecom environment. From the software technology point of view, telecom services are distributed software applications that may interact with the underlying telecom technology and resources through agnostic interfaces. State-of-the-art distributed applications require a middleware layer that lies between the computing and networking infrastructure and the software components or applications on each side of a distributed computing system in a network. The middleware is a collection of services intended to offer a higher level of abstraction for the underlying computing and networking resources by hiding the distribution and heterogeneity of implementation technologies. The middleware layer allows the implementation of open, transparent and scalable distributed systems. There are several middleware models, but many of them are based on the old client-server model, remote procedure calls, Corba, Microsoft DCOM, web services, etc. The term web services refers to a set of XML-based standards for a low-coupling middleware for application-to-application integration of Internet protocols. The core web services technologies are Web Services Description Language, WSDL. XML-based language for the definition of interfaces, data, and messages. SOAP, originally defined as Simple Object Access Protocol. XML-based middleware protocol for exchanging structured information. Universal Description, Discovery, and Integration, UDDI. XML-based registry for service registration and discovery. The basic web services architecture is the following. 1. The service provider creates services and makes them public by registration of its interface, WSDL, and access information to the service registry, UDDI. 2. The service consumer locates the needed services by searching the service registry. 3. The service consumer links to the service provider and uses the services. Service-Oriented Architecture and Service-Oriented Computing Web services enable a promising approach to the design and deployment of distributed applications by service composition. A service composition is a coordinated aggregate of services which have been assembled to provide the functionality required by an application, business task or process. There are two main ways of combining services. One. Orchestration. Centralized composition of services in which a director service controls the execution order in the interaction with component services. 2. Choreography. Decentralized composition of services in which component services interact by following common rules of interaction. The approach for providing end user applications by service composition is often called service oriented architecture, SOA. The key features of SOA are Each service makes an explicit separation between service interface and service implementation. Service interfaces can be published and discovered. An application composes its functionality by combining several services. A service can compose its functionality by combining other services either in sequence or in nested interaction. Even though SOA may be implemented on several platforms, in the current marketplace, web services is the most common technology platform for SOA. From the software engineering point of view, SOA is an architectural style, a pattern or logical way of designing a software system to provide services to either end-user applications or to other services distributed in a network via published and discoverable interfaces. Generalizing the SOA idea, we find the term Service-Oriented Computing, SOC. SOC is a new computing paradigm based on SOA. SOC utilizes services as the basic construct to support the development of rapid, low-cost and easy composition of distributed applications, even in heterogeneous environments. Services can be described, published, discovered and dynamically assembled for developing massively distributed, 
interoperable and evolvable systems.